In this video, we'll be going over torsion in thin-walled closed sections. Let's consider a hollow cylindrical member of a non-circular cross-section. This is the direction of the positive x-axis, and by using the right-hand rule, the torque will be going counterclockwise. Let's take a closer look at this portion of the section, which is this. We'll label this side A and this side B and we'll also label the dimensions. At point A, we have a thickness, so we'll call it TA, and a thickness at point B, TB. Note that we didn't label both sides with just T because we're not 100% sure that the thickness at points A and B are the same. The same can be said for shear stress as well. At points A and B, we don't know if the shear stress is the same, so we'll label each one separately. This would be tau B, and this side would be tau A. Our goal is to see if sides A and B have the same shear stress and thickness. Remember, these shear stresses have to be set up in either tip to tip or tail to tail, which you have already learned why in the past torsion videos. Note that this is the free surface of the shape. So using what we learned in the previous videos, we know the shear stress at B and A have to go this way. These are the average shear stresses at the mid thickness of the wall. So we can apply the equilibrium equation and take summation of forces in the x direction. Remember, the average shear stress equation is tau equals to F over A. So the force at point A will be equal to the shear stress at A multiplied by the area, which is the thickness at A times dx. The same can be done for the force at B. Then we can continue with our summation of forces in the x direction. This is what we end up with, and we can see that the shear stress and thickness at A is equal to the shear stress and thickness at B. The product of the shear stress and the thickness of the tube is the same at each location on the cross section and is called shear flow. Therefore, at all locations, Q is constant and is equal to tau times T. Now, if we look at the relation between torque applied to the cross-section and the stress in the wall, it can develop an equivalent torsion form for arbitrary closed sections. There will be a force, DF, acting along the edge of the tube due to the applied torque, and this force can be expressed as DF equals to shear flow, which is also tau times T times the arc length of the tube, DS. This force, DF, will cause a torque about point O, which is the center of the tube, and we'll call it DTO. The torque about point O can be expressed as the force DF multiplied by the moment arm, which is H, the perpendicular distance from point O to force DF. Since we have the equation for DF, we can sub it into here. DS times H can also be related to the triangular area DAM, where DAM is equal to DS times H divided by 2. Now we can isolate for DS times H and plug our equation back here, and we'll end up with this. If we replace tau times T with Q, which is constant around the section, and integrate over the entire section length, we get this equation. If we replace Q with tau times T and isolate for tau, we get tau equals to this equation. If we isolate for Q in this equation, we get Q equals to this. Note that the integral symbol with the circle just means that the integration is around a closed path. Similarly, the angle of twist for thin walled sections is this. Recall. For a circular tube, the angle of twist is equal to T times L over J times G. Based on the assumptions we stated above, we can approximate that the polar moment of inertia is equal to this, where J is the polar moment of inertia for closed sections, AM is the area enclosed by the center line of the tube's thickness, and this bottom portion here is the perimeter measured at the mid thickness divided by T the thickness of the tube where shear stress is being calculated. To find this equation, we can just isolate for J, then plug this equation into here. 
Note that this closed integral just means we're integrating over a loop. That concludes everything you need to know for torsion in thin-walled closed sections. We went over and proved that for non-circular thin-walled closed sections, the average shear stress is uniform throughout the thickness of the shape, which means that shear flow is constant along the thin section. We also derived an average shear stress equation, shear flow equation, as well as an angle of twist equation for thin wall closed sections. In the next video, we'll be applying everything we learned today in an example.